Hi, I'm Shalane, this is Dean, and we are Grassroots, Grassroots Living. Living, and this is how we live our love. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you were with us last week. We are talking about the 10 things you need to know to start your life on the road as a full-time RVer. Last week we started with the first five. We actually thought we were going to do all ten last week and just it ended up being really long and we were afraid that your range were going to blow up. So <laughs> um, we decided to do it half and half. So um, last week we did getting your finances in order and preparing your RV budget. And we are going to link that video, of course, up here as we do. So if you didn't watch last week's, the first five, the first five are from last week so go check that out and we did um, getting your finances in order number two choosing your lifestyle what that's gonna look like number three choosing your RV um, number four the RV accessories you're going to need and number five um, choosing a truck or a tow vehicle so that's what we did last week so today's video will show the second five you want to you want to tell them what the second five so we're talking about downsizing how do you go from your sticks and bricks house that your apartment that you have right now into it's a smaller little thing? Uh, staying connected on the road. You know, you got to have cell service. You've got to have internet. Some of you do anyhow. So these are things that we'll be talking about today. Uh, how to choose a domicile because if you're traveling all over the United States, what are you using as your address? How, yeah, how are you going to vote? Don't have a house. How are you going to do your registration, your insurance? Yep. Those are the things you need to. Yep. <coughs> I also need to... Um, you may take over. You got a frog? I got a frog. Okay. Nine is going to be choosing your insurance. And ten is where are you going to stay? You're ready to drive out of your driveway. Where the heck are you going? And there's going to be a bonus feature at the end. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, enjoy. We filmed this last week. And like I said, we did it in two parts. Or a couple weeks ago, did it in two parts. Um, yeah. We good? We're good enjoy okay number six we're gonna do number six on downsizing so there's a lot of different ways that you can go about downsizing and a lot of it depends on your timeline um, if it's quick, you're probably going to end up getting stuff rid of stuff you don't even want to because yeah. it's going so fast. But most of us have a little bit of time to plan and to prepare. And so don't get overwhelmed. If you've got the time to do it, take it room by room, closet by closet, drawer by drawer, and don't get overwhelmed. Keep in mind that um, <clears throat> you can always rent a storage unit if you want or need to. Um, we've got sweet family members that um, we've kind of taken over one of their rooms or one of their <laughs> closets um so if you've got good family or friends they might be able to keep stuff or like i said a storage unit don't buy knickknacks yeah. uh, no tchotchkes yeah, finally if at all possible well i'm going to do this in steps if you have the time to go from a, a big house to a smaller house or a house to an apartment that might be something to consider it's a way to downsize a little more gradually mm -hmm. um also if you have the opportunity if this is possible at all uh, buy your rig and park it on your property park it near your house live in it move into it a little at a time move in everything that you think you're going to need and go oh no i do need x and you can go back into the house and get that so if it's possible for you to make that kind of a transition. That's a great way to do it. So downsizing, don't let it overwhelm you. This lifestyle is so worth anything that you're going to get rid of. And somebody's gonna be grateful for what you took to the thrift store, <laughs> right? So keep that in mind, you're or doing a what? charity. Yeah, you're doing a charity when you give those things away and purge a little bit and it's all gonna be worth it in the end. Is number seven now okay well a lot of people are like i don't know how in the world i'm going to be able to to do this and still stay connected 
They, they rely on the internet for many different reasons. You might want to look at all the different plans available on your phone because some people only use their phone from that point on. Um, other people are like, no, I've got to have my laptop. I've got to. Well, some people are digital nomads. Yeah, that's they true. They work on the road, so they have to have yeah. good data. So, um, you know, we are lucky enough that we have a Verizon Jetpack that's truly unlimited internet. Uh, and as far as I know, for the longest time, I hadn't heard anyone that had even offered anything like that. Um, that's been over what, probably six. And we got months. really lucky because we pay ninety dollars a month for our phone and unlimited internet. So yeah, we did hear of something today from uh, Mountaintop Adventures, uh, something called Bix Wireless, and we'll we'll go put a link down in in the description below. We're not affiliated with them at all. Now there's a little bit of upfront costs. The modem is uh, close to three hundred dollars, um, but it is. I want to say $85 a month, and it is unlimited internet, not throttled back. Uh, uses AT&T or T-Mobile, but I, uh, so something definitely to think about. Um, right, if, if it's that's totally possible. Don't to don't let um, staying connected or not being able to stay connected. Don't let that determine whether or not you go on the road because. There's digital nomads everywhere. It's staying connected is not that difficult. And I've noticed now. it's kind of cool. So many websites like we use Campendium a lot when we decide where we're gonna camp. They actually put down what what uh, how many bars AT and T has, how many uh, Verizon has, how many T Mobile has. They'll actually put those things in there so you can, as you're looking at different spots to stay, you can go, oh, you know what, this is gonna be a good. You know, spot. the funny thing is, is that usually when you're boondocking, so many times you get better reception you get better internet than if you're in an rv park a fancy rv park because in the rv park even though they're supposed to have really good internet there's so many people yeah streaming that kind of messes it up if i'm out in the middle of nowhere nobody's messing with my signal exactly. so um like you said we are going to link that below but what we're going to do is we're going to link the um, video to mountaintop adventures not bix we want you to go to them um, watch their video or if you don't want to watch their video if you just want to get the link we want you to get the link from them so that they can get the credit because um, they are what is that affiliated term? with them yeah so they might get a couple pennies if you decide to get it okay we're on number eight so we're getting we're getting closer I, I wonder how they see that okay so we're getting closer so Number eight is choosing a domicile. <laughs> uh, choosing a domicile. Domicile is like where you live or where you're going to pretend to live, <laughs> right? So um, a lot of our viewers like to choose non-income tax states. I said that right, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's a little bit of a list. How many are there? Like eight or nine? No, it's about eight. Yeah. Not a long list, but there's some choices. Probably the most common are South Dakota and Florida. And Texas. Texas, probably Texas. Okay, there's so much research on the internet already. I mean, there's there's YouTube videos on this, so you can go ahead and go find that, but keep in mind that you do need to cho choose a domicile because choosing a domicile is going to, you're gonna need to know that when you go to get your insurance, right? Insurance, Other things. Uh, voter Manual. registration. Yes. Yeah. So, so a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll use uh, one of the mail forwarding services. Some of the most common are America's Mailbox. Uh, Good Sam has one. Uh, the Escapees uh, organization also has these types of things. Um, and so you pay a certain amount per year and then you can use that as your address. Mm -hmm. And then you can go in with that information. You can go in and get your driver's license and registration for your yeah. new license plates and things like that. A lot of, lot of stuff out there. I'm not going to go into more detail than that, but just know that... Or you could use a family member. We actually don't use a mail service. We use our daughter, which I'm sure she loves. <laughs> She's super sweet. She just keeps all our mail, and we talk about once a week, and she goes through it, and they um, text us uh, pictures of stuff if we need something. And do keep in mind, too, that if you're... Like, we're at an RV park right now, which is rare for us, but we are right now, and I needed a package from Amazon and I just ordered it and it came directly to the park. It came directly to our door yeah. at our site. So, so yeah, you'll choose a mail service, but yeah, you can get packages wherever you're at. We still shop at Amazon far too much. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Why can't it be like that? <laughs> All right. Before you go, you have to choose your insurance provider. And we're talking about all kinds of insurance, just like you have a home, uh, you know, home, or not homeowners, but RV. Yeah, RV insurance, yeah. Insurance, health insurance, life insurance, Car vehicle insurance, insurance yeah. all the insurances, okay? You got to choose that before you head out. Um, and that's why it's important to establish a domicile. Yes. Because by doing that, like health insurance is usually limited to that state, unfortunately. Yeah. So uh, there are supplemental plans that some RVers have, you know, supplemental plans that will chase you around the country. Yeah. We don't have it. There's something called RV Health, for example. Yeah. We're not affiliated with them. We're but, not affiliated with anything but, yet. Yeah. <laughs> but I will say this, they have uh, like a phone, phone of doctors. So got, get all your insurance in order. Keep in mind that domicile matters a lot of times when it comes to insurance. That's the story on that. Okay, we're on number 10, which is good because I'm starting to get tired and hot and loopy. <laughs> I always wish I could do the drum roll thing with my tongue. Number 10, I can't, but number 10 is decide where you're going to stay. You're ready. You got the RV. You're ready to drive out of the driveway. Where are you going to stay? So there are uh, four-ish main factors in this and number one is just do you have to work we are not uh, we do not get any retirement yet or any kind of supplemental income of any kind so we are work campers we usually work one to two jobs a year um, for anywhere from maybe five we work maybe five to seven months a year would mm -hmm. you say that's fair we work that's that fair. much most places when you go to work there provide your site you're going to go where your job is and there you're not going to pay for your site usually if you are taking a job where you have to pay for your site obviously decide whether that's worth it we're going up to alaska our next job that we've already signed on for is up in alaska this summer um, the pay is good enough to justify the fact that they don't pay for our site so we can still pay for our site and feel like we're um, comfortable with the money that we're making there usually we do not take jobs that don't include the site right. okay so first factor is are you going to work and if you're going to work that's where you're going okay the second factor is where the heck do you want to go this life is about freedom and this is what we do right we decide where we want to go and then we find a job there yeah yeah so just decide where you want to go this isn't a big mystery this is all about you and what you want to do that's why you're moving into a house on wheels so where do you want to go um and if you have to work just go find a job there they're everywhere so that's not hard to do um three is finances i guess if you yeah, have a ton you, of money yeah if or you, if you don't you have a nice retirement plan and you're bringing in the money and you want to go stay at rv parks where yeah just you just go wherever you want to go but you know we're on a super tight budget as you saw on the screen and probably like uh that's not enough money whatever <laughs> we're on a tighter budget by our choice we choose how much money we, we're both college educated intelligent people we can have the jobs we want we can have the money we want we choose our income right, right? um so our but our budget is tight and so we do a lot of boondocking but we still go wherever the heck we want to go so yeah, but it is going to depend on your finances, where you stay, right? That is true. And just number four is just where can you fit? If you have chosen a, a larger rig, you do have to do more planning than we have to do. Um, because even if you choose a, a nice RV park, there are still in some RV parks limited spaces for the bigger rigs. We've got sweet travels. We met them. They're awesome. They're beautiful, beautiful, beautiful people. And we love their rig. Oh, you have to check out Sweet Travels. But um, yeah, they definitely have to do a lot of pre-planning because they can't fit. Um, even in a lot of RV parks that are made for bigger um, RVs, they still can't even fit in those. So they have to pre-plan. Yeah, so your size so matters. Pulling a huge fifth wheel, pulling a trailer for their side-by-side -side. so and they've got a car on top of the truck uh, you guys just got to go check out sweet travels yeah. and they 
And it is a sweet way of traveling. They are so awesome. <laughs> we love them. Um, what's next? That was number 10. See, that wasn't even painful at all. And now we're ready for the bonus. Are we ready for the bonus? Oh, uh, yes, we are. The bonus is work camping. So you're on the road and either you have to work or you didn't think you were going to have to work, but you decide you want to get a job. That is called work camping. And work campers work um, anywhere from making quite a bit of money, right? Or some people only work for their site. So if you don't want to spend a ton of money on your site, but you also don't want to work a lot, there are a lot of places that just have volunteers and all you have to do, this is the greatest job, my parents should do this job. All you have to do is putt-putt around on your golf cart and say hi to people. Say hi, how you doing? Glad you're here. That's all you do. Yeah, you don't get paid for it. You but you get, get your site yeah. for free. And they even give you the golf cart to putt-putt around on. <gasps> While you're there. While you're you there. Don't keep you don't get to keep it. <laughs> I'm taking this with me. <laughs> My dad needs that job. Okay. So work camping. There are a lot of places to go to find work camping jobs. We're going to put several links below for you to find those jobs. And they are anywhere from like I'm going to be a photographer this summer in Alaska. We got a job offer at a dude ranch. Yeah. That was our very first job offer. We've worked for the Amazon, which you'll always hear people talk about Amazon. We worked for JC Penney. We worked as um, campground host, which was our favorite job. You got to be careful on where you choose to campground host. Um, so let's see, that wasn't there a pheasant hunting place? Yeah, we looked into for sure. That offered us a position mm -hmm. there. And the, the neat thing is the more that you work camp, the more you network and then people start to see you yes. and then they go, hey, you know what? I just happened to manage a, a small store up by Grand Teton National Park. We'd love to have you there. Yeah. And then, which happened to us. Yeah. And so you know, there's so many ways of getting a work camping job and people just think, well, how do you find out? There's so many different Well, ways. we're going to put so many links for you guys in the description below. Um, also, if you're going to be, if you're anywhere near where you can go to the Tampa RV show, they're going to have uh, work camp. How do you say that? People that hire work campers are going to be represented there. Uh, so you can go. That's kind of the job fair, right? And also in Quartzsite next, here in a couple weeks. What are the dates on that? Uh, I want to say the 17th to the 26th in that general range. That's like a big job fair as such. Okay, so keep in mind that there are a million different work camping jobs um, from really, really, really super short term to long term to volunteer for your site to make $15 an hour. So that's all over the board. So keep work camping in mind if you want to do that. If you have any questions, you can always ask in the comments below. We would be happy to an answer any of those questions. Also, Steve Turtle has a channel specifically about work camping and there's all kinds of um, videos on that, but feel free to contact us in the comments below or even through our Facebook page, which is Grassroots Living 180 at Facebook. And I think we have a link. We should have a link. We'll put a link below to that too, where you can also ask us questions. Did you have any final words of inspiration? Um, for people that are really looking into this lifestyle, I w there is a book I'd like to recommend. It's oh, only on yes. Kindle though. Um, yeah. Robin Barrett is the name of the author and she lives a nomadic life. And what's the name of the book, do you remember? Yeah. Be a Nomad, Change Your Life. And the reason it's only on Kindle is because she has got tons of links. You think we're overwhelming you with links? Uh -uh. Half her book is links. And so links are always changing and she wanted to always, for her book to be current, so it's Kindle only um, so that you can check out those links in yeah. her book. Because she'll constantly so good. Them. But there's also a lot of other books if you don't do the Kindle thing. Um, 
But yeah, as you're researching, use YouTube. There's a lot of Facebook groups, tons of RV Facebook groups. I'm sure I'll link one or two. Um, so yeah, just check those things out. Ask us questions. Ask, 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 ask. Right? Yeah. yeah. But like we said, it's totally worth it. We love our life. Um, it's pretty rare. I don't know if I've ever met an RVer that says, oh, this life sucks. I don't want to. I totally regret this. Because uh, they probably wouldn't be there. No, they're... they go back into the house. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. If you like this video, please like, subscribe. And most importantly, this is one we really, really want you. We encourage you to share with anybody that you think might be considering this lifestyle. Um, anybody anybody can do this so you watched last week hopefully and if not i linked it and then you went back and watched it so you got <laughs> the first five now you got the second five you got all, all 10 things you need to know and you are ready to go on the road and we're excited and call us because we want to hang with you if you're cool enough to be a full-time RVer, right and and the neat thing is we have some of the most knowledgeable viewers out there yeah. and please drop those comments anytime you can see maybe something that you disagree with well and it was impossible to, to get add. everything exactly. Yeah, exactly it was impossible to put everything on here it's impossible because i know people that are full-time rvers are watching this and go probably thinking well you should have told them this you should have told them this you should have told them this and there's not we would have to do a series yeah that'd be a pretty good series we'd okay. have to do a series but if you're one of those people and there's something that you wish that we would have told these newcomers put it in the comments they are you remember when you went first went on the road and you're wanting all of the information you can have so put that information in the comments so that they can read those comments and i you know gather more information the more the merrier the more the better that's right right that okay cool. thanks for watching please like subscribe share and ring the bell and until next time, time, and until next time, this is Grassroots Living, reminding you to get down to the grassroots of what makes you happy and live your love. We're thinking of you, and we'll catch you next time. Peace out.